Rick and Morty presents Morty's Run. Morty wishes his family could just eat instead of Summer and Beth bickering at the table, and Rick stays cheerful while lampshading that his parents are committed to sitcom-style parenting. I always saw them as a stereotypical sitcom couple, which bored me at first, so I'm glad Beth's not always so above it all. Jerry doesn't see how he's the bad guy here, and brags that he was competent enough to cook something. Summer's jealous that Morty gets to go to a summer camp. Beth says Summer never actually did any camping when she went there, and what she did do meant she had to pay extra just to get Morty in, which is unfair. Morty doesn't even want to go, making his parents look like idiots for paying for it without asking if it's something he'd want. Confusingly, Rick insists he's taking him to camp because he actually wants him to go to camp instead of being in his house to have 24-7 access to him as an assistant. Is there something strange about the camp? Morty doesn't want to spend time with kids his own age because he just finished a whole year having to deal with that, so he'd rather do what he wants for summer vacation. And it's relatable that Jerry wishes he could go. Beth doesn't sympathize with Morty because he doesn't plan on doing anything, and Jerry reassures him that he might find love there. Rick tells him it'll never happen so he won't get his hopes up. Jerry says something disturbing, and Beth reveals something else about why Summer got in trouble at camp earlier. And I bet it's Rick's influence that made her worse than the average teenager. Rick reassures Beth that he could sell him on the idea of camp, and says he's stepping up by reminding her that she wished he took her to camp, and rubs it in unintentionally that it's not with her. He uses the spaceship to take Morty to a youth camp, but says he's not going to camp. Morty knowing he couldn't get away with doing anything against them for trying to trick him caused them to say this is why he couldn't let him go to camp. He tells him to throw his stuff out of the ship because they need to take off before someone gets here. A muscular Morty bound on the circuit. And even though he's muscular, he still thinks he's talentless and they used up a lot of good Mortys. Even though they could have backed up their data and cloned them as much as they wanted. Apparently, they're too lazy to do that when getting Mortys would be easier. It could be easy from just finding and opening a portal below a Morty to send him there. Let's mention he could muscle up a clone he made of his own Morty. Morty assumes the muscular Morty's dumb, but it seems to be just because of a stereotype because he's muscular. And you'd think he'd just be jealous. But maybe that's why he assumes he's dumb so he can still be inferior to him. Rick says he is dumb, but that's the guy to be at camp. He must have gone to camp. Rick says smart campers get bullied. Well, this Morty is everything you want in a camper. Strong and very quiet. He plans on doing something alone, because he's got a date with a married woman. He has some clever dialogue, and Morty's scared enough to want to come along with him in exchange for leaving him alone. Rick says he found a planet perfect for him. A planet-wide social experiment where everyone's younger than Morty. Why does he say, for some reason? It must not be his idea. He tells Morty not to screw up the local balance of power for once. As if he does that every time. How would he not screw it up if he's older than all of them and associated with a mad scientist who could get them what they want? He opens the door while leaning the spaceship so that Morty would fall out of it immediately. Which would still only make sense if he also pressed the button to take off Morty's seatbelt. And there should still be a way to take it off manually, or he'd be screwed over if the spaceship got too damaged to let him escape. The other kids notice Morty's difference because he doesn't have green skin. But miraculously, they like him for being different. So already the social experiments failed by not showing him what camp would really be like. If camp is anything like school. Instead it becomes wish fulfillment, as the girl immediately wants to be Morty's friend. He's so off guard by how good she looks that he hesitates before trying to agree instead of agreeing right away. She tells him to be quiet for now when he naturally wonders who the teachers are here. The story was boring until they actually got to the planet. He sees people being put in a trebuchet to be launched into space because they turned 14. You'd think instead of them being sent into space they'd be portaled to another dimension by the one who set this all up. If she believes Morty about not being even close to 14, why does she call him a man? She looks serious and says they've got to get out of here because the loaders will be here any minute. Loaders make sure none of the 14-year-olds avoid Trevishay. I'm guessing she's 14 too. 
I like the Futurama shoe that imitated Logan's run better because it took place in a bottle city. So at least it was trying to do something interesting and unique. This is just Logan's run but with younger ages. She says Morty sticks out in those clothes and needs something to blend in, even though we just saw Morty earlier in those clothes. And there seems to be nothing wrong with the clothes. She decides to find him some clothes in a clothing place to blend in. All because she magically knew right away that he's 14, when no one else here did, just for the plot. I don't really think he needs her help. I think most people would think he's a kid. She says nobody here has money because there's no economy. As if society could possibly function like that. And takes him to the library and takes his hands to see his palms. When Agaltosian turns 14, a glowing blue crystal appears on their palms, so at least that explains why the 14-year-olds can't hide. But why is she even bothering to say this? Does she just assume he's a mutant Galtosian? I guess that's easier for her to believe in than believing he's an alien, because she doesn't believe in aliens. Eventually, the loaders find them, and I'm surprised it took until now for Morty to find out she's not that young. She's 16. And she didn't tell him because she thought he wouldn't like her anymore, for no reason, even though he's an alien to her. He tries to do something smart by kicking the loader in the weakest spot only to hurt his foot because he's an alien. I wonder why his foot isn't hurt for the rest of the arc if it's not healed. Well, Rick could put healing nanobots in him whenever. She says the weak spot of the Galtosians is their brains, and she tells the guys to take a look at these and opens her other two eyes. She tells them to grab their weapons. She tells them to do something to set them to stun, but sadly doesn't stun them. She didn't have to lie to him. I guess she thought she would have to lie to get him to use the weapon. I guess she only made him kill them so he'd be forced to stick by her because he'd be in trouble. And maybe too traumatized to think. But he'd only be in trouble if he was caught on camera, or couldn't clean himself up. She explains that runners go across the wasteland to Haven. Morty doesn't want to go anywhere with her because she's a liar, which only makes sense because he's sick of Rick. But unless he can get himself cleaned up, he clearly doesn't have a choice but to stick with her. She says they should get some sleep, not even listening to him, because she clearly doesn't believe he wouldn't stay with her. We see a muscular Morty being popular at a normal camp. Why did Rick even bring Morty to the camp? To show him the other Morty. He must not think Morty's that stupid if he thought he'd be bullied in camp. Cause he said smart campers are bullied in camp. So he doesn't think Morty's stupid? After we see the camp counselor wants to knock him down a peg to impress Summer, and he ends up humiliated, there's some more stuff taking advantage of the alien worlds because she says these harmless looking kids are armored against their weapons. And because they're nine, her four-eye technique wouldn't be effective enough. She takes advantage of them wanting a new video game platform to get their armor. And it must be pretty magical because it's one size fits all. He points to the giant sandworm, gets eaten, and he sees one person in there offering him a drink, with cups he somehow has. I guess he was swallowed while holding a cup. And he thinks it tastes horrible. The sandworm doesn't like it either, so he makes a plan that gets it to spit him out from disgust. Then Rick gets a beep on a device on his wrist, warning him about Morty's exact situation, conveniently. It turns out Carrie thinks Morty's dumb, and she had to wait weeks to find someone to help her run. She says she missed the people at Haven, and when Morty sees them, she says she'll see him around. So why did it take so long for her to go to Haven if she's 16? Why did she never get spotted by a loader if she was hanging around all those 13-year-olds? For three years. Like nothing ever happened, Rick talks to Morty, saying that he put a communicator in his ear. He obviously did this before the issue started, and that's smart. It's confusing to see a floating, glowing spike ball say goodbye to Morty and call him a freshman. He admits that he misunderstood the social structure here, so he didn't know Morty would be in danger, somehow. And he plans to pick him up. Morty thinks he's out of danger. So he makes the reckless decision to turn him down because he'd rather not go to camp. As he just assumes Haven will be safe forever and ever after all of his experience. Morty says he's made new friends as we see him holding a bottle to offer it to the sandworms who'd obviously try to eat him, so that's confusing. 
Suddenly they're sentient enough to be reasoned with. He's shown looking at a map near some of the people, as Morty thinks they'd all get along if they understood each other. How is he this naive? Morty waves goodbye in the desert as some vehicles drive away from him. I hate how vague this is being. Am I to believe Morty's reasoning alone caused the trebuchet thing to stop? Rick's spaceship arrives, and this time Morty's fine with it. So I have to assume this happened after a time skip. At least Rick's dialogue implies that he found something fun to do that kept him occupied and distracted the whole time Morty was gone that tries to justify why he let Morty stay away from him for so long. Morty says the stench on him is Galtosian body spray, and Rick bets he's been on a drug trip for a week on that, so he wants to pick up a keg on the way home. He says he thinks the store is closed, as we see giant sandworms near the cars. Why did they make it out of the desert and think to go here? Outside their natural habitat. We also see the youth camp on fire. I don't know why. I definitely don't like ambiguity in stories. Morty wanted to do that even if he was really stupid. I don't like this in the first place. Rick aims at him and they laugh about there being no camp to deal with next year. This story by Ivan Cohen was about Morty on the run with the girl because he was taken to a planet where everyone at age 14 gets sent into space and she's older, and miraculously avoided that fate for three whole years, so it would make more sense if she literally just turned 14. But I always assumed I'd be told why this whole thing started, and never got told the answer, so I just have to assume a Rick is responsible. So Morty ends up eaten by a cliché sandworm just to be spit out because he decided to partake in a drug drink someone conveniently had with them after they were conveniently eaten right before him. He only survived because he got lucky, and nothing really happened after he went on the run with her. All that really happened in the actual adventure was that he shot some people, and I had to deal with gore. So there wasn't actually a real plot full of stuff happening. It was a lot more empty than I thought. Combine that with the beginning. And no wonder I thought it was a boring issue. But at least he had someone on his side instead of being alone in danger the whole time. So it was better than I expected. He wasn't being chased by a whole crowd of people. But that would have been exciting compared to something as uninspired as a giant sandworm again. And then immediately reach his haven after just shooting, which I'm sure he's done plenty of times before. And the ending sequence is way too vague about what his time there was like. It wasn't an outright bad story. But it's disappointing that the plot didn't have more to it. Especially since it's just a ripoff of Logan's run. 